Hello and welcome to In the World, where we take a look at some current events that are going on in the world and talk about them from a Christian perspective. We could also call this the Great G and G Show because <laughs> I am Greg Durawart and you are Greg Kritzer. So nice to see you. Nice to see you. Happy too. Advent. Yes. Happy Do we Advent. say had, Happy ad, Advent? Not enough. Okay. All right. Well, Happy <laughs> Advent to everyone. Uh, this being our December show, uh, let's dive in. And uh, you want to read our first story? Sure. Okay. Yeah, an interesting one here. Let's see. The Freedom From Religion Foundation, a political activism group that seeks to root out religious activity in the public square, sent a letter to the East Knox Local School District in Ohio on November 27th. The letter complained that various coaches, including the head coach of the East Knox High School football team, were participating in prayer circles with players immediately before or after games. These prayer circles involved gathering together and saying prayers. Sometimes members of opposing teams would join in. The complaint said that because these coaches were acting in their official capacity for the school, their actions were promoting Christianity, which they claimed was unconstitutional. Allegedly, the coaches could not lead prayer or even participate in student-led prayer. According to a statement by the foundation's co-president, Dan Barker, school officials are free to pray in their private lives however they would like. But when they are acting in their capacity as government employees, they are violating the constitutional rights of impressionable young students by promoting religion. The letter asked the school district to instruct all its coaches to stop praying with players. The foundation sent a similar letter to a school district in Missouri earlier this year. In that case, the district sought advice from the Missouri Attorney General who replied, I write to assure you that the Establishment Clause does not prohibit public prayer and that the First Amendment protects the rights of public school students to engage in voluntary prayer in public spaces. In fact, public invocations to God constitute a cherished part of our national history. He added that if the Foundation seeks to silence voluntary prayer outside of Cameron's football games through a lawsuit, we will support your football team's lawful voluntary decision to pray. So what do you think about this? Interesting. Um... Our First Amendment gives us the right to meet in, you know, in, in groups, to practice our religion freely, to, to not be restricted from that practice. I can think of so many other things a group of teenagers could be doing. You know? But here the coach is leading these young men in, in prayer. It's open to the other teams. It's open to whoever wants to join, which also leads me to believe it's, if it's open to anyone to enjoy, then if you don't want to, it's okay. Absolutely. It's okay. Yeah. So here we have these young men. They're they're you know they're practicing their freedom of religion, praying. It's very positive. Yeah. But now you have another group who they're atheists, by the way. They don't believe in God, so yeah. they have no interest in this positive interaction, and they want to push their beliefs on these other young men. Yeah. I see it as being frivolous, and I was really happy towards the end of this article to read that local law um, entities were supporting these young sure. men. Sure, that was surprising to me. Sure. So th- this whole organization, the Freedom From Religion Foundation, a- as I've said in this forum and, and other forums b- before, is totally based on a myth. There, there, there is nothing in the Constitution or the First Amend- Amendment that says anything about restricting uh, the expression of religion in the public square. Uh, the, the First Amendment talks about how the government cannot create a religion. So in other words, the, 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 the federal government, a state government, a local municipality is not allowed to mandate that you be Lutheran or you be Catholic or you be Buddhist. We, we can't create a national or even a state denomination or religion. Um, it also says that the government cannot prohibit the free expression of our religion. Right. And that's not restricted just to private citizens, uh, or, or that, 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 that right isn't, isn't given just to private citizens. It's also given to teachers and coaches and people in the government, too. The government cannot restrict us from expressing our religion. Uh, and that's all that they're doing. And, and, and they're not re- even requiring the, 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 the players to join the circle. It's to- like you said, it's totally voluntary. Yeah, yeah. Um, so w- when uh, 
these organizations and the media talk about this uh, uh, separation of church and state. Again, as I've said before, that there, there, that language is nowhere in our govern, governing documents. Uh, it was in a letter that President Thomas Jefferson wrote to a Baptist church uh, in the early 1800s when, when he was serving as our third president. Um, and in, uh, groups have used that as their tool to try to eliminate uh, religion and, and faith from our country. And, and, and why is religion so bad these days? It, it's, it's positive. It's positive reinforcement. I mean, it, it seems like certain groups want to remove religion. Uh, well, and so, so you're answering your own question. You know, w- what is so wrong about organized faith? Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the problem is that that means you're not relying on the government to be your idol. Right. or to be your god, or to be your power. Mm-hmm. Um, if you remove faith from the public square, it needs to be replaced by something else. Right. And, you know, that's what uh, they're trying to do. Uh, they, they don't want you to rely on your faith. And one more question. I mean, it's, it seems like it's just another crack at a foundation for how our country was based on Christianity. Sure. Um, does this group complain about any other religions, or is it just strictly Christianity? Oh, good question. Um, I'm sure that uh, they would... not be in favor of any religion, but the fact that Christianity still is by far the the, the largest religious group in our country, Mm -hmm. that's the the one they want to target. And it's interesting on their website, the history of Western civilization shows us that most social and moral progress has been brought about by persons free from religion. (laughs) I I don't know what history they're reading, but I I would argue the opposite. Exactly. And again, we'll we'll see how the recent Religious Freedom Restoration Act plays in, into this. Yeah, yeah. And um, a, 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 another comment that I made earlier, I was really surprised that local law supported this group of young men. That was great. So we'll see how this plays yeah. out. All right, you ready for our next story? Yes. This also has a, a sports theme to it. Former Major League Baseball player Manny Ramirez, while winning the World Series, was also well known for his on and off the field antics. But now, according to an article in the Boston Globe, he is apologizing for his selfish actions. More than that, Ramirez revealed that he has come to faith in Jesus Christ and is enrolled in seminary. He apologized for forcing the Red Sox to trade him to the Dodgers. He also apologized for taking performance-enhancing drugs and for pushing a 64-year-old man to the ground in 2008. In discussing what he is doing today, Ramirez says he found God. He said, quote, what I am doing now, I preach. That's what I do. I go into hospitals just to preach and teach the people the Bible, end quote. He explained that he enrolled in seminary because I just want to learn. I've been doing that for five years now. It hasn't been easy. It's something great. Ramirez described his faith journey as growing and said, if you want to get to know God, you, ha- you have to have a relationship with him. Ramirez is also a board member with Planted Ministry, which describes its mission as working for a spiritual awakening across Latin America. Wow. Isn't this a, a nice uh, story from the sports world? And, well, it's still Boston, but <laughs> hey, it's okay. okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, when you think about the forum – that professional athletes have, oh, yeah. you know, and just the the voice that they uh, have, the pedestal that they're put on. Mm-hmm. Um, isn't it wonderful when someone like Manny uh, or you think about other uh, people that are prominent sports figures uh, that wear their faith on their sleeve? I, I think of Tim Tebow, what a yeah. wonderful young man he is. Mm-hmm. And he just, he doesn't care what people think. He just wants to just spread the love of Jesus. Um, And he's still a successful, you know, he's still making a lot of money and being very successful. And and, and he's, uh, um, you know, proclaiming the gospel uh, wherever he goes. You know, Mm -hmm. it's it's not just, you know, a a part-time thing. It it, it just is a part of the fabric of who he is. So uh, if Manny comes to do do that as well, God bless him. I think it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. And you mentioned his form that he has. I mean, he he was the, the top player in his time yeah. um i think he's 15th overall with home runs um he, yeah he finally ended the the curse of the bambino he yeah. helped the red sox win a world series for their 
since like 1914 or whatever. Yep. But um, I appreciate this forum, and I really hope that he does bring more and more people into Christianity. Um, again, with his platform and where he's focusing in Latin America, yeah. um, this group that he's a part of. It, it, it reminds me, we had this conversation earlier. It seems like, you know, youth is wasted on young. It seems like he has more perspective now as he's getting older. A lot of yeah. people come to Jesus and, and as they get older. Yeah. Uh, maybe their priorities change. They see life differently. Um, he's a family guy now. Yeah. Um, he sees the importance of that relationship with God in his life. Yeah. And he, he just wants to share it. And you could tell he's really involved because not only is he preaching to people in hospitals, but yeah. he's joined the seminary to, to establish his knowledge and his yeah, relationship with another God. Level. Yeah. And that's a good point when you bring up the fact that we can come to Christ at any age. Correct. You know, um, our Lutheran tradition, which stems from the Catholic tradition, has us going through the process of confirmation mm-hmm. when we're in eighth grade, you know, around 13 years old. Um, I think that that probably stems from the fact that, that um, Jews had the bar mitzvah around that same mm-hmm. period of time, and it's probably when. Uh, you're coming of age to where you need to take responsibility for your faith yourself, mm-hmm. yep. um, and you can't rely on uh, just be the, the, the be, being an innocent child getting into heaven. You, right. need, you, know, you need to own that yourself. Um, but not not every 13 year old comes to Christ right. by going through the confirmation process. Right. You know, I'm, I'm glad we still go through that education mm-hmm. process. I wouldn't stop that. But we need to realize that you still need to proactively proclaim that in your heart yourself, mm-hmm. whether it's uh, at age 13 or 49 or 99, <laughs> anywhere in between. As long as you do it, that's the important thing. Agreed. But the other thing that's an interesting take on this, when, when you see a famous person all of a sudden after being uh, having a reputation of being a bad boy, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden coming to Christ, a lot of people will look at that cynically, yeah. you know, and just not see it as being genuine. Um, mm-hmm. Who's the the singer Kanye West? Right, he, same thing. You know, he he has a voice, and he I think his his faith is genuine. Right. It, it seems real, mm-hmm. um, and um, I just hope that when it is real, people see it as genuine, and they don't you know have a cynical. Uh, thought of, you know, th- there's a lot of Christians that may mm-hmm. look at someone that had uh, uh, a, a risque past, right. and then oh, all of a sudden now you're saved. Well, we should say hallelujah, thank God, mm-hmm. good for you, and not have that double standard. Yeah, not to be cynical, but you know, with his past and with the, the stigma of steroid use, we'll keep him out of the Hall of Fame. I, I this I, this could help him. Well. <laughs> The only Hall of Fame that he should care about is the Eternal Hall of Fame. And hopefully that's what he's focused on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Agreed. So, all right. Okay. You want to read our third story? Sure. You have it. Yeah. Story number three. The internet is never at a short shortage of new memes, but this year it has been inundated with the phrase, OK Boomer. The phrase started as a reaction to a video posted by an older man on the social media platform TikTok in which he complained that millennials and people in Generation Z allegedly don't want to grow up and think the utopian ideals that they have in their youth are somehow going to translate into adulthood. The phrase, OK Boomer, emerged as a dismissal of the ideas of people from older generations. It is often used to mock the attitudes of older individuals, especially baby boomers, which younger people find to be narrow-minded, outdated, overly judgmental, or condescending. The reception to the term has been mixed, Some people have found it to be highly ageist, while others claim the ridicule is warranted, blaming older generations for supposedly not taking adequate action on issues such as climate change and the slow disappearance of the social safety net. Videos containing the phrase have been viewed 44.6 million times on TikTok and has even made its way off the Internet, such as during halftime of the Harford-Yale football game on on November 23, 2019, when climate change protesters rushed the field and chanted, okay, Boomer, when they were asked to leave. Okay, Greg, I feel as if I'm up on all current things. <laughs> I've never heard okay, Boomer. I, I just started hearing about this very recently, so um, we're, we're pretty much in the same boat. So, <laughs> it, But it's basically 
a, a sarcastic comment. So if if I'm a boomer trying to impart some words of wisdom to you, mm-hmm. uh, I wouldn't even say a millennial. It's 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 more so the the generation after them, which uh, are sometimes called Generation Z. Mm. I guess their kids will will have to start back at A. Uh, <laughs> um, but um, if you don't like the words of wisdom that I'm trying to impart to you, mm-hmm. you'll sarcastically say, "Okay, boomer," as if like whatever. I don't care okay. what you're what, what you're saying to me. I, I find so first of all, I find this very interesting because think back to when the boomers mm-hmm. were in their late teens and early 20s. What were they doing? They, they were the flower children of the 60s, and it was the Depression era adults criticizing the boomers for uh, – not taking life seriously. Um, and it was the the boomers that were saying, hey, Depression era people, mm-hmm. don't you care about civil rights? And, you know, don't you think we should get out of Vietnam? Mm. Um, so every generation has this conflict, an older generation with the younger generation. Mm-hmm. So, so let me, so the, the main point is this is nothing new. Now, the only thing that is new is the very public forum of the Internet and social media Uh. that just broadcasts this uh, intergenerational conflict Mm -hmm. to a whole new level. So, um, you know, from a Christian standpoint, we should – I think that we shouldn't encourage this – animosity between Mm -hmm. generations. If anything, we should help um, encourage a dialogue in terms of what things we agree on. Right. You know, I actually remember hearing about how uh, when the when the millennials were younger, like when the like the the, the early millennials were still like in high school, um, there was a lot of things that they agreed with the boomers on. Um, and they, they were actually getting along and leaving us uh, Gen Xers behind, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, but um, I, if anything, I think that we should encourage you know, a, a dialogue centered around what we agree with from a Christian perspective. Right. So, so now I learned a new phrase. Okay, oh, okay boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so anything else on that story? Um, this one is what it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there, uh, in this, in this environment, there's always, it's going to tend to go negative. It, it, whatever can tear us apart, whatever our foundations are, just, it, it's just very concerning to me. That's yeah. why if anything, our focus needs to be on Jesus, on the Bible, on our Christianity, on our values there to be together in Christ. Um, yeah. because being so involved with worldly things, I just don't see anything positive coming out of that. Absolutely. So yeah. well, let's make sure that we uh, pay attention to what uh, everyone is saying and try to always uh, provide an opportunity to, to, to make a positive spin on it. Yeah, let's build each other up. Yeah. Let's not tear each other down. Amen. Amen. So before we close this month's episode, I have two items I want to mention. Number one, uh, in terms of uh, the, the logistics of our show, this is actually the next to last episode of In the World. Um, if, if you want to use big words like Ken Coughlin, it's the penultimate uh, episode <laughs> of In the World. So January uh, will be the, the last monthly episode of this series. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, moving forward into 2020, uh, we'll look to see uh, how we might want to incorporate uh, those discussions in, in other ways. Um, and then the last thing I want to mention, this being uh, the month of December. Uh, if any of you ever watch the our one of our other shows, Trinity Talk Live, one of our episodes back in early September talked about uh, strategic planning and the goal planning process, keeping eternity in mind. Mm-hmm. Um, if you didn't go through that strategic process uh, back in September, now is a great time to go through that. 
you know, through the, uh, the, the final few weeks of December uh, as you put goals together for calendar 2020. So right. uh, if uh, anyone has any interest in uh, getting some support or encouragement uh, regarding that process, I'm happy to help with that. So uh, thanks again for joining us for this episode of In the World. Happy Christmas and Happy New Year, and we'll see you in January. Bye.